Okay, so tell me what happened. So you and several other students who are all officers in uh, Penn State Students for Life, kudos to you, by the way, for standing up for the dignity of life. I appreciate that. What happened when you went to the event? You had RSVP'd, your name was supposed to be on the list. What happened? Correct. Well, actually, everyone else went um, a few minutes before the event started. I was coming late from class, and they had already told me that none of them were allowed in. I was like, oh, I'm going to try anyway. So <laughs> I went down, I handed my ID. Immediately, she took one look at it and said, you're a leader of uh, Students for Life, and you have to leave. Um, I argued with her for a little while, and I asked her why I couldn't be there, why I couldn't just come in and listen to Cecile. I wasn't there with any signs. I wasn't chanting. I was by myself. Everyone else was already upstairs. And she said that she was afraid for Cecile's safety. Interesting, interesting. So wait, on, on, your, on your college ID, when you showed them your uh, student ID, does it say that you were an officer in Students for Life, or did she just recognize your name? No, she recognized it. I assume they looked us up because two of the officers had received texts the previous morning. I guess they didn't get to me yet, so they didn't send me a text ahead of time saying I had been removed, but it was clear they knew who I was. So it was premeditated discrimination, basically. They'd mm -hmm. already decided that you couldn't come in. So just to be clear, you weren't carrying any signs, you weren't uh, being disruptive at all, you weren't protesting, picketing, or trying to interrupt, or planning to interrupt Cecile Richards in any way? No, not at all. Not at all. And yet they said that they were worried about Cecile's safety. So, I mean, that seems to me that that's insinuating that anybody with a pro-life belief is inherently violent towards opposition. Yeah, which is surprising because it seems entirely the opposite, obviously, considering they are aborting 321,000 plus babies a year in their clinics and that they come to pro-life events chanting and rowdy and trying to disrupt our speech. It's never the other way around. No, it's never the other way around. Okay, so did you contact the university? What did they say? Yeah, so we had contacted the university actually in the morning when we had received the text saying that we were removed from the attendance list. And we talked to the student faculty council, or sorry, the student faculty senate, and they had told us that it was a violation of university policy. At that point, they were unaware that it was an off-campus uh, group. They thought it was just the student group. They didn't know it was co-hosting. Later, they talked to them. They found out that it was a co-hosting situation, and it was actually funded by the off-campus group, Planned Parenthood Keystone. So they basically said it's out of our hands, and they wouldn't do anything at that point. So even though it was hosted on school property in conjunction with a university-funded student group, it's not a violation. It's not a violation of their non-discrimination policy to say, listen, because you hold these religious views, because you hold these political views, you're not allowed to come to our club? Correct. Interesting policy, right? They're very interesting policy. Okay.